Yeah, I want to go over how to set up the Spooky 2 um, device as a Clark Zapper. And you can just be, keep using this as a Clark Zapper without batteries. Uh, that's another thing to extend the usability of this frequency generator and the uh, Spooky 2 program. First, you'll need the handhelds. These are actually, they come from uh, Spooky 2. You can look at their site. Uh, they're attached via the, uh, the clips. Um, alligator clips that come with the wire that comes with the frequency generator that comes out of here now I've actually extended these wires by uh, adding another um, set of wires to it but you don't need to do that it actually the wire comes with the generator and you, you have to order the accessory uh, it's very inexpensive though and it's made out of 316 stainless steel food grade stainless steel you would hold these in one in each hand like like so now you can also use a paper towel with uh, wet with some kind of uh, tap water or saline solution or tap water is just fine to give a little more conductivity now hold the Clark actually um, she recommended using she had actually a few frequencies she used uh, but the main one she used was 30,300 Hertz and um, she also recommended using 15,000 hertz and 2,500 hertz, but the most common zapper out there that is used with the Holder Clark frequency, uh, using her frequencies, is 30,300 hertz. So I want to show you how to set that up. So when you're on a Spooky 2 program, it's actually pretty self-explanatory. I actually made a few of these already on here. So say, for instance, uh, you want to call it uh, Clark Zapper. And since I made a couple of these already, I'll call it Clark Zapper 1. And, you know, it has a list of all the parameters over here. So, it's going to be 30,300. Now, you can put 30,000 if you want. It's not super... Actually, she says the frequency isn't critical. But what she says is very critical is the, uh, the other specifications, especially the 100% positive offset. So, following the directions here, um, you would use D50... For 50% square wave, and then um, the, uh, the the uh, W2, and uh, that is uh, that's that's 50 D50 is uh, is 50% uh, duty cycle. W2 is means it's a square wave. The W says the type of wave. Then G0, no gating. Now I had some set up with gating, four hertz gating. I think it's stronger, but Let's just say this is another version of it. This will be the standard version. And then uh, we're going to put the volts in here. Now, since she uses such a, well, I'm going to say 15 volts. You can actually go higher. You're not going to feel it. She says to use a minimum of 9 volts. I've used devices with 12 volts. I don't feel it. I use 20 volts. I don't feel it because the hertz is so high. So I'll say 15 but that's more than adequate. And then uh, a, a capital O, that's going to be your offset. If you use the small letter O over there, it means it's a negative offset. You use a capital O, it's positive offset. And she wants it as 100% uh, positive offset. Okay. So all the directions are actually in here. Okay. Then you say save and exit. And now you have to have, you can have all these clicked off, but you have to have, if you're looking for your custom frequency and through the search, which you just named it, you have to have this checked off where it says it's checked off custom or else it's not going to show up. So actually I have a few versions of Clark's uh, zappers, but the one we just did is this one, uh, zapper one, right? There's actually a few of them. So that's what I just call this one, Clark Zapper 1. Double click it on, goes down into the drop down box, and here's the generator we're going to run it on. And you notice it's in a, a light red color, that means it's stopped. We click this on, and this is all light red. Hit start, and there it goes. So it's running square wave, and out. Um, it actually is running on out 1 and out 2. Now I only have it connected to out 1. I'm not going to run any kind of spoost boost or anything. There's actually other parameters I'm not sure about, but with that, but this is the simple way. It's got plenty of voltage, 15 volts. 
you don't want to be running 15 volts with the low, um, you know, below 5,000 um, frequency. But when you're up to 30,000, uh, 15 volts, you don't even feel it. You do not feel it at all. It's running a positive offset of 100%. And uh, it's got the 50% duty cycle and a square wave and a 30,300. So you would hold one of these in each hand. You have that one in, the other, in my left hand, which the camera's in my hand, and this one in this hand. And, you know, I have it set at a dwell time of, the standard dwell time is 180 um, seconds. You know, you might run it through for maybe five, six minutes. You, you'll have a, you have a counter up here. It says treatment duration, you know, how long you used it. And you can follow what she says. You know, she says to you so many minutes, you know, I think it's seven minutes, take some, you know, and then uh, wait so many minutes and then do it again. And that's what she says to do. I'm not saying it's going to work or not, but I'm just telling you how to set it up. So if you don't want to buy a zapper, you know, you could still, you could still zap with this spooky toe. And um, I just want to warn you, though, I put 15 volts in here. She said it has to be at least 9 volts. Now, I have a standard Clark-type zapper that's an improved one that it's actually at 12 volts. I still don't feel it. So, I mean, at these higher frequency levels, the voltage, you just don't feel it. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. But if it's at a lower frequency, do not take from this example of 15 volts because it's... Uh, it's like if you pick up that hand, it'll, it'll, it'll feel like it's almost like buzzing in your hand uh, if you're below, like, say, 5,000 um, uh, hertz. It'll feel like it's buzzing in your hand. So you want to bring down that voltage quite a bit, maybe to 5 or 7 or something like that, or maybe even, I don't know, maybe 3 one might even be good, but maybe 5 or 7 is usually typical for the lower the lower um, hertz. But anyway, that's that's the way to set it up. So that's more versatility. And actually, you know, if you had a second person here, you can actually run another one of these cables because it's going through out one and out two. Uh, you can actually run a second cable and, you know, treat, you know, it could be, you could be sharing this device with somebody else. So it's like two zappers in one. So, you know, I mean, am I claiming what, how much a zapper is going to do? No. But what I'm saying is, you know, it, it extends the, the um, usefulness of the device because you can use it as a zapper too. And that's, you know, if you want to try that out and see if it's effective for you. I know there's people that say it works. There's people that say it doesn't work. It's very controversial. But then again, you know, the price of this unit is very cheap. So, you know, that's a, just another thing it does because... You know, it's the only one I've ever seen that has so much programmable features in it. You can pretty much do anything you want with this device. And, um, you know, as we experiment with it, we'll find more and more uses. But, you know, I think the Clark Zapper is probably, you know, the least <laughs> important feature of this. But if you want to actually try a Clark Zapper, that's how you would set it up.